Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another Division 2 video and today I want to talk about specializations. Recently I've been breaking down various aspects of the game based on the information we currently have to try and paint a clearer picture as to just what this sequel is bringing to the table. We've already gone over brand sets and how they differ from gear sets and last week I explained how the new mod system works, how it's changed from Division 1 and ultimately how it aims to improve the player experience. So if you've missed either of those, you can find them linked down below. But today we're talking about specializations since there's more to them than just a fancy big weapon and their purpose in game should result in much more stuff to do and chase end game. So let's go over everything we currently know. Of course if you do enjoy this video then a like would be super appreciated and be sure to comment down below and let me know if you guys have any questions. Now to begin with specializations are something you won't encounter until the end of the game. When you hit level 30 they're designed to be another tier of progression that you can begin working through once you hit max level which is pretty sweet. In the division 1 you hit max level and then you really begin grinding gear, weapons, mods, that sort of thing and you obviously build your character accordingly but in the division 2 your progression doesn't end when you hit level 30. Within each specialization you'll have things to work towards and these will ultimately influence the way that you play and allow you to spec your characters even more than before. Currently we know of three specializations, these are the ones they showed off at E3 but there is supposed to be a fourth and more on that in a bit. We have the survivalist, demolitionist and sharpshooter. Upon reaching level 30 you'll pick one of these to begin with but it's important to note that you are not tied into this choice. You don't hit max level and then pick a class that locks you in, you will be able to switch specializations when you please and the progression you've made within that will be saved while you work towards the next one. So you could level them all up to the max one by one or perhaps level them up in parallel as you go, it's entirely up to you. At the very top level, pick an specialization will give you access to a new fourth weapon slot, a signature weapon if you will, and this weapon is specific to the specialization. The survivalist has an explosive tipped crossbow, which is the one that I had a chance to try out at E3. You fire it into your target and then a second or so later it explodes. It's really good at breaking armor on the more heavy enemy types, and it's just a cool new weapon type that we haven't had in the game before. The Demolitionist has a grenade launcher, which is obviously good for explosive mayhem. I don't really need to tell you guys what a grenade launcher does. You fire grenades, they explode, and explosions are cool. And then you have the Sharpshooter, who has a 50 cal sniper rifle. The cool thing about this is that the shots can penetrate multiple targets, and it also kicks out a sort of shockwave in the process, so for snipers out there, this is one hell of a meaty weapon. These weapons use a different ammo type, and that ammo typically drops from the tougher elite enemies periodically throughout your encounters. So naturally it's not something you'll be able to use all the time, but it is something that'll turn the tide in battle when you have access to it. But this is stuff you've seen before. However, it's important to note that specializations aren't just another weapon slot. That's how they start out, but not how they end. When you pick your specialization at level 30, the weapon is the first thing you'll be exposed to, but as you level it up further, you'll unlock more stuff. To be clear, we haven't seen how the leveling process works for these just yet, so that much is still a bit of a mystery. But what we do know is that specializations will also grant you unique skill mods, talents, and stat bonuses. So an example of that could be, say, the Seeker Mine. Sure, by default you'll have the core mods and uses for it, but if you're a Demolitionist, you might, say, have a Cluster mod. Meanwhile, maybe the Sharpshooter has a Gas mod, and the Survivalist could have a Flame mod. That's just a made-up example, but the point is that within a specialization, you will also have the options to further tweak your skills. The idea behind that is that you then have the means to spec even deeper into your chosen playstyle. If you've built your character around a particular playstyle, with brand sets, weapons and mods that complement those, you can then take it a layer deeper and pick the appropriate specialization to further enhance that. But again, you're not stuck in that either. So while there will be some mods and talents unique to the specializations and those can't be shared to the others, you can still swap whenever you please. Furthermore, the grenade wheel in Division 1 has gone. Now you pick one single grenade type and that is your throwable item. However, the specializations also offer their own unique grenades too. So while something like a frag grenade is pretty basic and can be used by any of them, you might have the flashbang being unique to the sharpshooter or the incendiary grenade being unique to the demolitionist. So in summary, specializations are a new tier of end game progression that essentially allows you to progress beyond level 30 like never before. I also mentioned at the start of the video that there's supposed to be a fourth one. Julian Garrity said during E3 that they're only talking about the first three at that time, so quite whether the fourth one will be there at launch or perhaps it's something they plan to work in further down the line as part of the free DLC, we don't know just yet. Looking at what we currently have, we have a couple of explosive experts and a long range option, but it would be cool if one of the weapons was perhaps a flamethrower or maybe even something more support focused. But at this stage it's a bit early to begin speculating, so we'll leave it there. But just know that with each of these, 
we'll have more stuff to do end game. And if they add more of these as the game goes on, then that's again an opportunity to shake things up. But for the time being, that's it. That's a quick rundown of everything we currently have on specializations. If you have any questions, let me know down below. And also if you have any thoughts on what you'd like the fourth specialization to be, also let me know. But until the next one, thank you very much for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.